Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's talk hook up is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hook Up. Shimano rods and reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hook Up, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Welcome back. Hour number two, Let's Talk Hook Up, right here on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Pete Gray here along with Corey Sandin. We're in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hook Up here right next to a, a very dreary and rainy Fisherman's Landing and uh, all the San Diego landings in Point Loma. And we have a great guest. He's not dreary at all. He is very excited <laughs> and a great friend. Uh, Captain Todd Manser from Manser Marine talking some good fishing and lots of good information here. Right, Corey? I've mentioned it. It's truly an honor. Honor to have yeah. Todd in studio and so knowledgeable, and he, man, he's done it right. Yeah. So if you want to join us? A couple ways to do it: telephone two one three four three two ten ninety, or you can text us via the app. Make sure you leave your name and telephone number, a way to contact you after the show, because we're, we're going to have Todd flip a coin, and we're giving away uh, wine on liters, Apco Psycho Fluorocarbon. We're giving away four wine on liters to one lucky texter yeah. or caller. Well over a hundred bucks worth of floor wine. Oh. Oh, so cool. And they're just uh, top quality wind on leaders from our friends over at AFCO. And and excellent fluorocarbon. Yeah, too, for so. sure. Yeah. There it you is. Bet. Yeah. Gonna wait gonna get through two one three four three two ten ninety open right now. It's time for the catch report, Corey. And it's brought to us by Summa Gasoline. They have the best quality, easy in and out, and the lowest gas prices. And again, that's Summa Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. Pull up to the expanded Summa Gasoline and get low, low gas prices and diesel prices for your uh, car, truck, and boat. They can now accommodate twenty four cars and trucks to fuel at any time at the same time, plus twelve diesel pumps. The bistro is full of everything you need for a full day on the water. Plus, you get 100 pounds. Todd, listen to this one. 100 pounds of free ice if you purchase 35 gallons. And I've done it where, nice. I, where I put 20 <laughs> gallons in the boat and I put 15 <laughs> gallons in the truck. And there's my 100, 100 pounds of free ice. And make sure you step in and say hello to Martha and the friendly staff. Some of gasoline, free ice for Let's Talk Hookup listeners. And always the great best prices. And, and trust me, with the uh, prices that nice. Yeah, it's nickeling right up. I mean, it's you, nickeling up. Yeah, so. you, you got to go to Summit, and they they'll take care of you. There for it sure. is. Hey, let's find out what's going on there. Our private boater buddy, Captain Mark Wish from Pacific Edge. Good morning, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Pete. Corey, Todd. Great show, man. I'm loving all these stories. <laughs> Doing a fantastic <laughs> job there. But uh, hey, you guys remember that old adage? You know, Mark roars in like a lion and out like a lamb. Man, not this year. God almighty. <laughs> this weather has just been relentless these past couple weeks. It was gusting over 40 last night at Ooh. Catalina with all those heavy showers. That just sucks. But, uh, you know, up until these past couple weeks, our coastal water temps were holding up really well for uh, wintertime. A lot of it was uh, up to 60, 61 like that and all winter. Kept them bass biting really good. But, you know, we've definitely taken a hit. Uh, past few windstorms, and uh, it's going to take a little bit to bounce back, guys. Just be patient. Good stuff's coming. So in terms of actual reports here this week, you know, realistically, not too much. Nothing at all from the outer islands, of course, but that'll change. And then uh, did get a few reports from Catalina. The halibuts are still biting up on the beaches there, all up and down the back in the shallows there. Um, it's been really just a spectacular halibut winter over there. It's just it's uh, awesome. No word at all on yellows this week. Last good sea bass bite was two, or actually, I don't know what's going on right now, three wind storms back, but one of the sport boats had a really good hit on the sea bass there, and uh, but haven't seen anything since. Locally, you know, kind of tough. Again, recent conditions are just uh, not conducive to really good local fishing. There. The bass has backed off a little bit. Halibut fishing locally is still your best bet for something worthy, but... Things are changing. You know, rockfish season opens here in a couple of days on the first there. Huge opportunities in terms of fishing some of the deeper water. There's areas that have been closed for many years, like I think it's close to 20 years now. Um, a lot of that stuff is opening up, but you guys have got to be up to speed on the latest regulations. 
Uh, they're making some more changes. They're not even finalized yet. They're not going to have the final regs for when the season opens, so you got to stay in tune with what's going on. But a couple things for sure, Calcott is still closed. So even though you can fish in some of the Calcott areas that were closed before, the fish itself you can't keep. Must be released. Uh, Red Snapper, and this one's near and dear to my heart because I love my uh, deep-fried beer battered red snappers are dropping the limit from four down to two so that sucks but yeah. uh, is what it is and then the top priority and everybody better pay attention to this one uh everybody's got to have a release device now finally a descending, a, device. So. A, def- a descending device which isn't a bad thing i think no, that's a great it's idea, great idea. Great no, idea. I, that's it, it, it's just fantastic you know and it's not only because of the clothes species like calcod Bond spotted rockfish and one or two others, I think. But you know, we catch a lot of them little little guys that you don't want for whatever reason, or you know, some of the lesser tasty ones. You know, guys release. Um, so there's a, a really you know huge part in what we do in maintaining our fisheries, uh, having that release device and using it. And now it's regulation, so you better uh, have both a device and the outfit to fish it and enough weight you know those bigger cows are going to take 10 or maybe more pounds to get them down so you got to be prepared for that and uh as you might expect we got all that stuff in stock at the tackle store and then now uh, here's a little bit of breaking news i thought this was really interesting you know danny and alex jeff they do a fantastic job writing the uh, written reports for fish dope but they've also added in the chart section these new uh, high-definition uh, bathymetric charts of Catalina, San Clemente, Santa Barbara Island, and San Nicolas Island. So you guys, you know, for this rainy weekend here, can sit there at your computer, pull up a map of Catalina or Clemente or whichever, and look in great detail at the, uh, at the bottom contours and find all kinds of little spots that you never had an idea were out there. So it's a new addition to Fish Dope. It's a fantastic tool. You know, I've had that app on my phone for, but you know, for a long time. But you know, being able to look at it on the computer and really see what's going on—that's just fantastic. The guys wow. at Fish Dope, a great uh, it, job. It's awesome. It I love it. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. I love it. Fish Dope, you gotta have it. Fishdope.com. Yeah. You heard it from Todd. Too. Yeah. Uh, there's some a couple of rockfish spots on the back of Catalina that I fished forever, and then I'm, I'm looking at this chart. I'm like. 100 yards of, look at this, and then it just loaded. Just, you're like, oh, my God. Really? I didn't, you know, all these years. Right, Mark? <laughs> that's it. It's so, that's so, it's, so, again, what is it What is it on Fish Dope? It, it's right there where you look at, the, like, the water temperature and the core fill and all that, you know, where they have the different charts. We've got yes, Mexico. And, it's all there with it. Yeah, you know, Southern and, California and, it, and, and, and all that. And it's called what? It's the uh, high definition bathymetric chart. Bathymetric chart. Okay. Yeah, they got a separate category. You just scroll down a little farther than the normal map, and it's right there. And it and actually shows it. the spots. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, really? it's incredible. It's incredible. It shows the fish. Hold up. It's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, Lasley's I secret. Mean, Todd, it's Todd, cheating. Todd, you'll get this. You know, when when we were learning how to local fish years ago and you drive around endlessly and once in a while you find something new and you know we didn't even have loran back in the day you guys draw the pictures of land but we actually found stuff you know you had to get shore bearings to be able to try and get back on a little spot and now it's like oh my god so, so th- will this help for catching tuna and offshore species too todd well you know it, it's going to show you good contour it's going to show you where you know you can you can start in your mind and and, and in your log books putting together uh, a playbook of where you're seeing the fish you know stack up more on yeah. on certain areas of you know contours and high spots but for the like the beach spots and the shallows and the rockfish stuff it's just a game changer no kid oh, it's cheating oh wow. well, <laughs> well then if you're, not a, if you're not a member of uh, fishdope.com, you better get that new membership discount using the code hookup now. Hook up now, all lowercase, no space, hook up now. Thirty dollars off a new membership to fishdope.com and I'm sure they'll go people will be jumping on there. Hey Mark, uh, I got a text from our good friend Chef Jeff that said that a friend of his caught a marlin two days ago on the south end of the Huntington Peach horseshoe kelp on live bait and uh, there were four or five in, in there with it. Uh, what do you think? I think that's a 
pre-April Fool's joke. Yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, is is he pulling? Well, it's not it's not April Fool's yet, so he shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, so well, there's no you know, truth to that. Before we had all this wind, and, and when the water was 62, 63. You know, I've seen some crazy stuff early season in, in other big El Ninos, so I have believed it. But after this current go around we've had, nah, not so much. Nah, it's, like, yeah, it's <laughs> a little cold out there for Marlon. They're still down <laughs> south for sure. But you know what? With with the El Nino scenarios, I mean, I have honest to God, and all of us have, that spent a lot of time on the water. I mean, you just see some just crazy ass stuff that you can't yeah. figure. It doesn't always True. relate it, to normal water temps. So, in other words, knows? it could happen. Yep. Oh, it could definitely happen. You never know. Yep. All right. It's fishy. Yeah. Well, how do we find you, you know, Mark? This, this this year, you know, I was thinking when I was writing my notes here that it's very parallel to ninety seven, ninety eight, which was one of the biggest. El Ninos of all times ever, and the one that we're experiencing is not quite that big, but it's up there. But I, we had the same thing at this time of year. The weather was just horrible for just weeks on end, and then it straightened out, and it was game on. You yep. so get ready, guys. It's coming. Yeah, for sure. All right. How do we find you, Mark? Corner of uh, Bolsa Chica and Edinger in Huntington Beach. Phone number at the store is area code 714 Eight four zero four two six two website PacificEdgeTackle dot com with uh, a lot of that rockfish stuff that you need to go out there and catch them. So yeah, we'll talk to you Monday, week. April first. Don't do it yet. Go uh, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that very much. We'll talk to you next Saturday. And you got it. We'll see you guys. And the great information from Bolsa Chicken and Edinger there for Mark. And we're going to go all the way down to uh, C4 Sportfish in Mission Bay and talk to Marcos. Good morning, Marcos. Good morning, guys. Hope everyone's staying dry. Right. Got a little bit of rain coming through here. And it's kind of been the story of the winter so far. Some really great fishing interspersed with some weather that completely shuts shuts down the fishing for a few days. But it keeps going the way it is. We're just going to get right back out there. Had a couple of boats come back this morning. Flair Supreme came back from a two-day. Uh, they had 43 bluefin, and 35 of those were in that 100 to 180 pound range. Oh, so pretty good fishing there. They had a day and a half just before that where they had 20 bluefin, and again, those were mostly in that 100 to 180 range. I think the biggest on that one was 193. Gosh. So good, good fishing overall. We're Could be a little tough. Those. We're spoiled. I, you know, right? It, it's not even April yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even April, you know, and like I said, the tribute out there also, I think they got out there just a little bit too late to really get in on that, that day and a half trip. They came back with six blues then, but even then, those fish were that 80 to 170, so still pretty good fishing there. Um, overall great, like I said, they're taking a couple days off here, perfect timing, a little rest before that April 1st rockfish opener on the local trips. New Seaforth had some pretty good fishing during the week for those whitefish, sheephead, sculpin. They'll be right back out there on Monday. Hopefully see some of that bass, maybe get into some yellowtail. And, again, we switched back to two days, or two trips a day, excuse me. So we had those 6 and 12.30 departures. So check the website, seaforthlanding.com. And have our full schedule up there for those half days. Uh, morning and afternoon, we've got some other trips out there. Tribute running a lot of open party trips. San Diego is going to be running in May. So coming up pretty quick here. got about a month to go. And that schedule's up there also. Some other trips scattered throughout the summer there, the day and a half and two days. Everything up there, you can make a reservation straight online. Give us a call at the office, 619-224-3383. Come down and visit us in person. Uh, say hi, pick up a radar next door, pick up your MC swim baits in the tackle shop there, and get out there fishing. Good job, Marcos. Appreciate <laughs> that, Marcos. Always. We'll talk to you. That, yeah, for sure. They have one of the largest stocks of uh, MC swim baits. They there. do. I mean, yeah. there's, there's a handful of shops that are. Yeah. That are uh, They're deep. one of the special ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Family. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're the, uh, the hometown, basically, of the MC swim bait. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, thanks, Marcos. Appreciate that. And we'll talk to you next Saturday. We'll talk to you then, guys. All right. right. Great one for sure. And that's brought to us by Fisherman's Processing and uh, the best premier processing experience out there, period. Uh, check out the new and easier online system to book your processing for your long-range trips. Now with the addition of the new team members, Fisherman's Processing stays far ahead of the rest. Uh, they'll have more same-day capacity and the finest customer service. Stop by their location in the Old Town and Taylor Street, or you can check Fisherman'sProcessing.com and make sure you make your reservation today. Yeah, for sure. Hey, I have a great 
great text here from Garrett in Laguna Niguel. He says, good morning, guys. I'm looking into buying my first boat. For someone not mechanically inclined, what is the best way to learn some basic boat mechanics, specifically to be safe on the water? Great, great question. Yeah, that that is a great question. So, honestly, hire somebody like me. There's a lot of guys out there that you can hire to run through things with you uh, to help you understand uh, the startup procedures Teach to the you. shutdown procedures, yeah. how to operate your boat. Uh, there's, I mean, it's it's so hard to say that you can learn this from a book or go to a class. Really, what you need is you need some hands-on experience from guys that really know what they're doing. Um, Dave Hansen, your saltwater guide, has a lot of opportunities there if you want to get with uh, Dave, uh, or you could call me at Mansur Marine nine four nine five four seven 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 four eight, and I could uh, certainly help you. We, we have guys that uh, will come and teach you how to operate your boat, teach you your machinery, help you understand your life-saving equipment, make sure that your day on the water is the best day so you don't end up with vessel assist bringing you back home and your wife making you sell the boat. Yeah, and uh, oh, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> and you'll do it from a, a, a 60-foot yacht down to a you know a 25-foot yeah. outboard power. I've ran right? everything from 8-foot rowboats to 120-foot <laughs> triple decks, out to 125, 140. So, uh, so yeah, we, it doesn't matter the size of the boat. It all comes together it's the same thing the slower to go the less damage you do and we'll teach you how to do it right so yeah. uh yeah um yeah give us a call um or you can check out uh dave has a great uh you know uh website that helps with uh, that kind of uh stuff there as well uh and if you're looking to buy a boat i'm also a salesman i've been selling boats now for uh the last year uh, we just closed on another boat yesterday and if you're looking to buy a boat uh, right now i'm with uh, uh luke brown yachts i sell everglades i sell Invincibles, as well as broker boats. So, um, if you have a boat you want to sell, you have a boat you want to sell, or, or you know, and that's the nice thing about what I do at Mansur Marine is, is uh, you know, I'm on the docks, I'm I'm with the people all the time. You know, I, I, people recognize me. I, I'm I know the machinery, I know the electronics, I know the, you know the, the the ins and outs of every aspect of every boat that I walk on. It doesn't matter if I've been on it before or not. I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to go through a boat and help you buy the right boat and help you get the best money for the boat that you're selling. So uh, if you guys are looking to sell or buy, uh, give me a call, 949-547-7748, or email me at toddmanser at gmail.com, M-A-N-S-U-R, and I'll so help you all the way. I, 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 we talked about it during the break. Um, do you have a, a, an Everglades with brand-new outboard power on Yeah, so um, I, I That's have... A, which is a deal right yeah, now. Yeah, so I have an Everglades for sale right now. What it's size? A, it's, a, it's a 27, uh, and it's the original 27, so it's the, it's the two. 70 cc. Uh, it's a 2008, but it's brand new, repowered, uh, or it's got like 153 hours on the engines. Very well Yamaha. maintained. Yamahas. Uh, it's got warranty. Uh, this thing's just an amazing boat. And then, if you really want to step it up, I've got a brand new Everglades right now for sale. It's a 365 with triple Ferrado uh, 350s. Gee. Top speed 60 miles an hour. Yikes. Uh, tower. Wow. Uh, I mean, this has got every bell and whistle. But uh, I'll tell you that price range starts with a few more zeros. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but, give us a comparison there. So, so the, the Everglades, uh, the 27 Everglades that you have for sale right now with brand new motors is how much? 188000 And how much is the one with triples? $1.1 million. Oh, come on. Wow. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That, that it's a 2024. Everglades. It's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your yeah. life. Uh, it, you come down to Dana Point. Uh, and I have it on uh, the the right there on the Malacon on the board rock uh, boardwalk on N1. Uh, you can't miss it. It's the first dock in the East Cove. Uh, it's the most amazing center console uh, you'll you'll look at. It just Crazy. An absolute amazing piece of wow, machinery wow. and I'll make you a deal that's that's the asking price I'll make you a deal you guys want to get into one of the most incredible Everglades you've ever seen in your life you want to turn heads you want to get out to the Tanner Bank and back before dinner <laughs> this boat will do it in comfort wow uh, yeah, these, yeah this is an amazing machine you have your fingers in everything and and you know what's cool is not only you're so darn knowledgeable and, and know everything you're so well connected like yeah. you know everybody so uh, you know years of of uh, I guess good bedside manner 
protecting my reputation, always, you know, just being a good guy, being a good guy, uh, falling through with what I say I'm going to do uh, has led me through a great career. I've gotten some great opportunities from some amazing people and the journey is continuing. You know, I have a, a great team I'm working with right now. Uh, you know, we're selling Everglades, we're selling Invincibles, you know, we're brokering boats. So I've got Mansa Marine. I've got my son on board. Uh, I've That's got cool. my wife, you know, I've got the Graywell Foundation. You know, we don't know. People don't even realize. Yeah. This. I've taken over 30,000 students on an ocean experience at no cost to the taxpayer wow. through the Graywell Foundation. Uh, myself, so cool. uh, Mike Hansen, Corey Hall, we started this in 2008 to bring a curriculum and a, uh, a field trip opportunity uh, to our uh, local coastal students and as far inland as we can go that the buses can get them there. And uh, we've just put together just an absolutely amazing opportunity for kids to uh, experience the, the ocean the animals and uh, and I've, I've been almost to every classroom of these students too. So how cool! I, I go and you can tell I can talk. So uh, I will lecture from first grade to college. Wow. Uh, I'll sit in there with a, with a museum of biofacts and a wonderful PowerPoint and make an, an assembly uh, as animated as you can ever imagine. From like I said, first grade to college, and then bring those students out on the water and give them the best ocean experience they've ever had. And this all started with you, Dave. Hanson. And Corey Hall, all I mean, why do all cool things yeah. not only Seaforth, but why do all cool things start yeah. with Dana Wharf? Yeah, so Dana like, Wharf. There's so many cool. It's such a cool family. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. you know the other thing too is uh, Todd's been a part of Let's Talk Hookups for like from the we've beginning. been around from 32 years, and yeah. he was here like in the beginning, in the beginning, there, yeah, with Marty yeah. And, and, and the old and everybody. The old studio. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. <laughs> so when we, you know, it, it, it's it's you've been here, and I've known him, and and he's the real deal. Yeah. Well, you guys. Like, Everybody has been such a blessing in my life, and uh, all the opportunities I've been given, and, and you know, I'm just truly thankful. And I, I'm trying to to do the best I can to make it to the finish line, and uh, and enjoy it on and, the way, and enjoy it on the way. Well, so. the other thing I mentioned too is you're now a, a California State Board member on CCA too, so you're yes. giving back, trying to protect our uh, our fisheries, our, our fisheries, yeah, and, our right and, to fish. And, yeah, and, and, and you're and a big part of CCA, and that's absolutely, really great. yeah. I, I'm trying to do as much as I can be. As involved as I can, people ask me, Todd, how do you ever have time for your horses? Because he forget that too. Yeah, he's a rodeo horse. captain. Todd, yeah. Todd, Todd Manser loves to throw. It. Yeah, I can cast a bait. And I can also cast a rope pretty darn yeah, good yeah. around a couple horns. Are you a tail roper I'm, or a head I'm roper? I'm a header. My, son, a header, my son's yeah. a great healer. <laughs> I, I can heal, but my I, I, I'm my I, I, I'm better off staying as a header. But yeah, no, we <laughs> we uh, we work really hard uh, so that we can play a little. There you go. Oh, there well, is. let's jump into the phones, Corey. Oh my gosh, Rich. Rich from Bradley. I'm sure he's got something out of that rope and too. Good morning, Rich. Yeah, everybody's a cowboy until they have to put their boots on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, got I got a question about the Humboldt squid. Um, a while back, there were, well, quite a while back, there was a reports that the reason that the big masses of sand bass that used to invade Huntington Flats were wiped out by the Humboldt squid, and that's the negative side, and it seems like. I haven't heard much positive about them, except some of the sports boats like to, to target them when we had big runs of them. Um, not my cup of tea, but I'm wondering, is there any other positive side? Are they uh, part of the forage base? Do the bluefin eat them? Have you tried cutting them up for bait? And what are your other thoughts on Humboldt squid, maybe? So, so Humboldt squid, are they are part of the forage of a lot of uh, fisheries and a lot of our uh, ocean uh, marine mammals. Uh, uh, eat humbled squid, everything from sperm whales, rizzo dolphins, bottlenose dolphins, a variety of different dolphins, uh, Pacific white sides, uh, our swordfish, uh, it's one of their main diets is humbled squid. Uh, there's, there's so many different species that live off of humbled squid and the humbled squid, you know, feeds in that scatter layer most of the time. Um, and the abundance in the ocean is, yeah, it's, it's huge. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's everywhere. It's not just here in, yeah. and, uh, and, and there's a little, you know, I, I I can put some science to the sand bass fishery for you if you want real quick here. I'll give it to you in, in as quick as I can. Let, let me guess. I bet number one, it, the word is going to be cycle. It's cyclical, yeah. They're, they're definitely cyclical. But do you guys remember uh, in 2007 and 2008 the red tides that we had? 
Yes. You remember how extreme they were? Do you guys see any shore crabs crawling around the harbor much anymore? No. Do you see any sand crabs on their beaches much anymore? Uh, you know, yeah, so yeah. It's yeah, starting to come seen, back. Yeah. Remember when they died off? Yeah, okay. yeah. Now, now, what happened is we lost a lot of nutrients that live in our sediment out to a certain depth of water. We lost a lot of our razor clam. We lost a lot of our brittle star. We lost a lot of our pumpkin worm and tube worm. And uh, in when that happened, we lost a lot of our small baby octopus, a lot of different octopus, a lot of stuff that lives in the mud. Sand bass come up the coastline here every year not to look for anchovies and sport boats. Braylon scoops the sardines or, you know, strip squid and, and uh, swim baits. They come up here looking for rich nutrients that are found in the sediment at the bottom of the ocean. And we had a cycle where we had some pretty extreme uh, uh, ecological changes. And we had a large die off of shore crab, sand crab, brill star, uh, uh, razor clam, the clam beds just basically kind of dissipated and suffered tremendously from uh, a change in the, the way our countercurrents uh, uh, homogenized the prevailing currents coming into California. And, and so we saw a lot of ecological changes. And so the sand bass uh, population comes through and they look for that rich sediment. Again, not looking for anchovies and sardines. They did not find it when that sediment was uh, compromised or those nutrients were compromised that sand bass started uh, spawning in different areas because they don't live here. They migrate or, here. Or possibly maybe even if they're spawning here, the recruitment isn't as bountiful as it would have been with the plentiful. Right. right. So most of the sand bass that we see that come up here in Southern California are come from around Cedros. You know, they, they come down south. They come from they're they, and they highly migratory. High, highly migratory. And, and the stuff that we get up here really doesn't come from south of Ter- Turtle Bay or Cedros. It, it's that population from there. There is some fish trap uh, pressure on, those, uh, on that species, I'd say. That would be hard. But um, the fact that that species was eaten by Humboldt squid, and that's the reason why we don't see them, uh, highly unlikely. It's 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 more uh, based on uh, change in the uh, nutrients that they search for here in Southern California, which is why we see them more uh, north of us and more south of us and not here in the Bay. So in Southern California, from Point Conception to, or just from Point Vicente to Point Loma, we're 30 miles deep in a bay, and we rely on countercurrents to keep the water moving properly in here. And when we have slight changes in... in uh, and those countercurrents and they go somewhere else. Well, we just get it's relocation. Yeah, and so for they're, sure, they're, it's you know it, it's again it's all a cycle. We're, where'd the barracuda go? Yeah, yeah. you know the barracuda yeah. are up north. You know, so there's a lot of things that change. Um, that humble squid can be a virus, and when it comes through, it can eat a lot of, of different nutrients, especially when it gets close to the beach. But it isn't the reason that we lost uh, the sand bass migration here. That just there. all happened at the same layer, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. one layer yeah. overlapping oh, yeah. the other. Yeah, yeah, they could come in and eat all those pyro. Pyrodomes? Uh, pyrosomes. Pyrosomes. Yeah. pyrosomes. And that would that, be that fine. Would, that would be fine. Yeah, yeah. we'd like that. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. 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 I want to remind you, this portion of the show is sponsored by Terrafin Sea Service Temperatures. Focus your fishing on the most productive areas by using Terrafin Sea Service Temperature. Chlorophyll, ch- currents, and uh, and a lot more with Terrafin Mobile. You can access your charts on your phone or on your mobile device. Check Terrafin.com for more information. And when we return, we're going to be taking your calls to Text and more when we return on Let's Talk Hook Up app, the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. 24 years ago, I visited this amazing place called Haraguay Archipelago. I just could not get enough of these amazing islands, natural beauty, friendly people, and phenomenal fishing. I knew I had to spend more time there. Moving forward to today, here I am, a fishing lodge owner. Hi, this is Valerie Hilbridge from Queen Charlotte Safaris in beautiful Haraguay Islands, British Columbia, Canada. We are a boutique lodge just steps from the Sand Strait Harbor, offering a truly unique fishing adventure. Our fishing is world class. You will fish for kings salmon, halibut, lingcod, and much more. Our fishing grounds are untouched, unspoiled, and surrounded by stunning scenery. We are dedicated to making your adventure an experience that will be a lifetime of memories. We will welcome you as friends, and you will leave as part of the Queen Charlotte Safaris family. You will come for the fishing, and you'll come back for the memories. We are booking now. Please give me a call at 1-877-815-2892, or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or website qcsafaris.com. Day at the Docks is back, and Fisherman's Landing Tackle will have our largest booth ever. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Both in the shop and out in the parking lot, we will feature our huge inventory of rods, reels, lures, clothing, and more, all on sale. The fishing season is here, so take advantage of our inventory and sale prices while you can. Plus, our expert staff at Fisherman's Landing Tackle will help you get all the right stuff. Day at the Docks and Fisherman's Landing Tackle. Take advantage of our great deals Sunday. 
April 7th. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the Long Range Fishing Experience. Spring 8-day, summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back, 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality Long Range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. To charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers. But Islander Charters is much more than great fishing. The quality of the captains and crew, as well as the great meals and service, speak for themselves. Comfortable staterooms, a super clean and well taken care of boat, are just a few of the reasons the Islander is so popular. The Islander specializes in one and a half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islandersportfishing.com. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having so much fun in studio. We have uh, an open line if you want to join us at 213-432-1090, or you can text us via the app. Yeah. Giving away uh, psychofluorocarbon uh, wine-on leaders. Yeah. Four of them to one lucky winner. Yeah, from AFCO. We want to thank them uh, at AFCO. And uh, right now, uh, Catherine Miller from Day at the Docks is on the line. Good morning, Catherine. Hey, Catherine. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. I can't believe Day at the Docks is a week from tomorrow. Is that right? Crazy. It is, and we're getting rid of the rain this weekend, so next week it's going to be absolutely clear. It's yes. wonderful. <laughs> we're, we're counting on that, Catherine. I like yeah. your Order thinking. it up. Yeah, for sure. So tell us about Day at the Docks this year. How many years now? 42. 42 wow. years. Wow. Can you believe that? No. Incredible. Pretty I awesome. Know. Yeah. So what can we expect uh, a week from tomorrow, Sunday, April 7th? Well, the show runs from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Parking is on Shelter Island. We've got shuttles going all day back and forth. We've got a full schedule of things going on from beginning to end, and it's going to be it's going to be a great day. We've got some great seminars happening. Um, a lot of focus on bluefin this year. We've got uh, uh, Rob Tress is going to talk about uh, about uh, tactics for fishing bluefin on a sport boat, which are different, of course, than fishing them on a smaller boat. For sure. Um, we have we have um, Scott Manson. Uh, but actually, then we have Captain's Concepts talking about about bluefin tuna fishing day and night, both day and night, different tactics. We've nice. got uh, Steve Carson talking about the rigs you need to set up to go out there. So bluefin's really covered, but lots of topics covered throughout the course of the day. We've got 13 seminars all told. We have three stages. We've got entertainment. We've got demos. It, it's a celebration of sport fishing, right? It's the you know it's celebrating the start of our season and it looks like it's going to be a great one. Oh yeah, for sure. Of course, we are going to be doing a, a, one of our rare live broadcasts there, starting at 7 a.m. right in front of Fisherman's Landing. There, uh, 7 to 9 a.m. We'll be starting, starting and uh, talking some while people are setting up. We're going to drag over uh, several of the participants uh, involved in Day at the Docks and talk about what they're doing at Day at the Docks, and that's going to be a super fun show. Uh, I, I can't believe it. one week from tomorrow, right? One week from tomorrow. And, April and course, yeah, and of course, uh, Doug uh, and and Ricky have a great sale going on right there in the parking lot in the, in the store at the Fisherman's Landing Tackle, and just so much stuff. One of the things that I love is uh, the Everingham Brothers Bait Company. Always come and have a great display, uh, t-shirts, and uh, and talk about uh, you know such an important part of our San Diego fishery, and that is live bait. Well, you know, I'll tell you, they've been out looking for mackerel for the kids' fishing adventure. And they're having success, so we're very we're very optimistic that it's going to be a great success for the kids. We've got uh, fishing pens at each of the three landings, and kids fishing from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. with the help of the San Diego Anglers and San Diego Rod and Reel Club. So that should be uh, should be a real success this year. Well, that's great. Now again, one week from tomorrow, a Saturday or su- excuse me, Sunday, April seventh starts. Uh, of course, with Let's Talk Hook Up Live broadcast at seven, but the official start is at 9 a.m. Right? That's right. That's right. 
All right, Catherine. Well, great. But, but, but the door, we don't have doors to open, so you can come in early if you'd like. Very yeah, well. just come in, grab a parking spot while you can, and and uh, and uh, enjoy the day because it certainly is a wonderful day. Uh, we'll see you at Day at the Docks, and thanks, Catherine, for getting bringing this back and uh, having such a great celebration for sport fishing. Thank you very much. All right, appreciate that. Mike Lum's on the line. I'll bet he's got a little something to say about <clears throat> Day at the Docks next Sunday, right? Hey, Mike. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, that was uh, that was uh, great to hear that uh, Catherine telling us all about Day at the Docks next Sunday. It has become one of the biggest days for the Captain Rollo Kids at Sea program. And I wanted to remind everybody that this is our annual use tackle sale at Day at the Docks. It's the, the one only time only, each the year. The huge one. Woo! That's right, the huge one. We're going to uh, we're going to be right out in front of Fisherman's Landing. There, we'll be setting up early, and we'll have a, a gigantic selection of used fishing tackle that is going to be priced right. Uh, we only do this one day a year. We work all year collecting this and uh, rounding it up, and everybody's been so generous this year donating their tackle. Uh, but we have one day to sell it, so the prices are going to be right, and the selection is really, really good. Um, in addition, we will also, at the end of the day, we will have the drawing for our annual raffle, which we've been selling tickets for for months and months and months. So those 30 prizes will be awarded uh, later in the day. Obviously, winners don't have to be present, but but it'll, it's, it's always fun to watch uh, when we when we give those prizes away. So we'll be doing that on the same day. So next Sunday is a big, big day for Captain Ronald Kids at Sea, and I just wanted to remind everybody that that is the used tackle day. Yeah, and and uh, and and when you're talking about the Captain Rollo's Kids at Sea uh, Grand Raffle, it's thirty thousand dollars in prizes, correct? It is thirty thousand prizes given out uh, in thirty prizes. The top ten prizes, we draw those names and we set them aside, and then those people get to pick from the top ten. So uh, somebody that, for instance, uh, one of the first things to grab would be the $2,000 worth of fuel from Summit Gasoline. Yeah. But, if you are, but if you're from out of the area, that might not work for you, so you'd pick something else. So that's, that's why we do it that way. It's a little time-consuming uh, to get everything done, but I think it's the best way to award this. And we've sold so many tickets. I, I will tell you, uh, guys, this is the first year in memory that we had to have more tickets printed <laughs> we sold we sold so many tickets we ran out so to, in order to have some for next sunday we printed some more and all this money goes to taking kids fishing through captain rollo's kid to see and that juice tackle sale you know all year long uh, we all get calls hey i have all this tackle that i'm not using or my you know my grandfather died and he wanted you know the, the, to help kids cake and fish and they get these giant donations so there's really good stuff at this at this used tackle sale. So take advantage of it, right, Mike? Absolutely, and uh, and we appreciate all the donations all year long. And, and if somebody has some stuff that you want to donate and maybe you haven't thought about it or haven't had a chance and you're going to come to Day at the Dock, by all means, bring it with you. If you got a few rods or reels or whatever you want to hand off, and we will we will gladly accept those donations right there on the spot. So. Perfect. All right. Again, uh, one week from the Royal Sunday, April 7th, uh, Day at the Docks, and the Captain Rollins Kids at Sea, a giant used tackle sale. Don't miss it. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. All right, appreciate it. Hey, I have a great text here from Corey in Escondido. He says, good morning, guys. Such a great show today. My question for Todd, I love to learn from you on how to use my electronics, wouldn't we all? We Would Would you ever consider doing a class explaining how to get the most of your electronics? You know, <clears throat> I, I wish I say that I that I would. It, it's, it's come to where I have very little bandwidth, you know, for something like that because of all the other things that I do. And it's really kind of a hands-on it, it, thing to really do it properly, it right? It is, yeah. You Individually. Really, yeah, and, yeah. And, and the circumstances change so much. Yeah. I mean, I mean, when we when we fish, you know, never call your fathometer a fish finder. That's not what it is. It's a fathometer. It's a device. You're the fish finder, so you kind of have to know 
the structure you're around, you know, the, what the ecosystem is going to look like, you know, what you're driving over and how how it appears on your on your electronics, from your plotter to your 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 fathometer. Um, hands on is the best way to learn. Take notes when you're using your equipment. Um, you know, there's a lot of YouTube videos of guys using their equipment that that can help. Um, Absolutely. Uh, really, I mean, uh, it, and we can practically do brain surgery ourselves now by watching YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, those are some different ways to go. Um, uh, and then, again, I, I can't stress enough, there's so many qualified guys that are in this industry that are that are always looking for side work because our we're, we, we have a diverse industry and we, we have a very short season when you look at it in reality and such a high income level here of living in California. Reach out to your local captains. Try to find somebody that can guide you and help you learn your electronics. Then not only will they teach you, you know, boat safety and how to use your electronics, they'll probably give you a couple fishing spots. So the next time you take your family and friends out, you're going to come back a success. You know. Yeah, good suggestion. I, there. That's a great suggestion. Yeah, and yeah. Like if you're an inshore guy and you hire Benny Florentino for his right, instance, absolutely. I mean, he's going to show go you about calico on vision. his new boat. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. One of the best guys on the planet. Oh yeah, way. Benny's I great. Mean, that's Benny what I want to do. Right I want. Now. Yeah. We got to go with Benny. So, yeah, that's so famous from uh, West Coast Marine. I know. Oh boy, that's that, quite the boat. That's the way to learn. You know, yeah. it, you know, being with somebody. It's and, the experience, and, learning, and it's the experience. Yeah. yeah, and and it costs a little bit more than a class, I would imagine, but you get more. And not to mention, you become part of the family. When you hire a guide, one of us to come out on your boat, you become part of the family. And we just, I know, it's just the way we are. The, the fishing industry, in in general, you know, once you, you know. You know, partner up with us in any aspect. You become part of our family. You can ask us questions. We want you to learn. We want you to be successful because it it's a reflection of who but, we are. But but let me say from my side, like not everybody's a good educator. Like right. not everybody's a good teacher. I mean, I can tell you are. Sure. I know Benny is, and there's really a core group. Brandon Hayward might be. You know, there's a core group yep. that that can help explain and teach <clears throat> and and be an educator too, for yep. sure. Yep. Yeah, I have a good text here. Okay. Okay, great. It's uh, Todd. He says, uh, this is Jim Hendricks here. Another the, icon, right? The yeah. Jim Hendricks? Yeah, exactly. Wow. I know and I know, right? Really, he's, He really respects your years of experience and knowledge. What do you see as the most uh, dramatic new technology in saltwater fishing boats today? The, wow. The, probably the, well, there's a, there's a couple, actually. Um, Omnisonar. Is probably one of the most amazing devices out these days uh, for you know high end, top of the line, you know, you know, open water blue marlin fishing, striped marlin, uh, black marlin fishing. That's just that that technology is just incredible. Uh, but it's not for everything. Um, what's really been uh, uh, helping uh, as far as electronics go uh, is the the shadowing we were talking about earlier. I think that is one of the most amazing things of being able to look at bathymetric charts in a 3D depth perception image. Um, the way that you can see it now through uh, the BD Outdoors site. Uh, there's a couple other ways that you can look at these uh, these uh, bottom shadowings and, and really understand the bottom. But I mean, there's there's not one great answer for that question. There's so many things happening in in, in our world with electronics. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've got all these apps like Marine Traffic. Everybody's got AIS, so everybody's looking at Marine Traffic. So everybody's kind of following everybody around in Marine Traffic. Uh, <laughs> trying to cheat on that yeah, level. Trying to cheat right? on that level. You, you've, <laughs> you've got all these different networks like BD Outdoors and Your Saltwater Guide and things like that that you guys can go and and be a part of and 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 spend less fuel and more time. I'm catching fishdope.com, uh, fishdope.com. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's I, talk hookup. I mean, you guys are giving weekly fish reports. I mean, heck, I learned something today. I'm, you know, it's just, it's just great, you know, to stay in tune with everything. But as far as the electronics go, uh, you know, there's, there's all sorts of different stuff coming out, like side view yeah. uh, on Garmin and, and Simrad that are just, and, and Fruno that are just, I mean, these some the, pretty amazing for, stuff. For pretty a small, amazing. I know, I know, I know Ray yeah. Marine has just completely changed their whole line. 
of electronics, and uh, it's way different than the old way yes. Green Marine used to so be. So instead of just having an, you know an up and down uh, standard uh, fathometer, now we have side view opportunities that that are really game changing. And I mean, for the freshwater guys, you watch these guys fishing freshwater with a trolling motor now. They're literally looking at every fish they're throwing baits at. It's, it's yeah. video game fishing, really. I mean, in, in my eyes, it's, it's video, video game, game fishing. fishing. But, so, but that side scan yeah, sonar side, like that, yeah, okay, could also view. be taken as a small boat sonar. Exactly. Off so, right. Exactly. So and, and look, at the, the look at the night things. fishing that uh, all the sport boats are doing now. They never would have that if it wasn't for the the, the electronics that they have yeah, today. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. our sonars are huge. You know, I've, I've always been a fan of, of uh, you know, of sonar, and it's by the way, fish or fathometers are not sonars. Sonars are allowing us to look uh, away from the boat at different angles or tilts and different ranges. And you know, forever we all used uh, searchlight uh, style sonars um, from uh, you know Fruno, uh, Cytex. Uh, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of different brands, uh, Coden, uh, and now you've got Omni, uh, which is yeah. I mean, Omni. That's crazy. It's that's just, a video game. That's a video game. Yeah. You never you never lose sight. Um, but yeah, so pretty amazing stuff. Yeah. Hopefully, and, and I thanks, the nice to hear from you, Jim. Yep. Uh, and Jim certainly uh, yep. knows his electronics. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, editor for uh, for uh, Trailer Boat Magazine. Yep. And, and, and writes and for so, several yeah. several mean, magazines. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, and, and all national very knowledgeable name guy. brands. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Hey, let's jump back on the phones. Let's do it. How about Steve? Steve calling from Lucadia. Appreciate you joining us this morning, Steve. Good morning, gentlemen. Been a while since I called, but the, this topic that came up about the sand bass and the fact that they were, you know, feeding on mudborne uh, nutrients. Todd, do you have an opinion about where and the possible effects of the dredging that's going on right off of the Swami's MPA right now? I live here, and I'm watching this thing run up and down the beach for months now and just peeking out huge amounts of silt onto the beach. Is anybody watching what's coming out of that hole? And uh, I, I, you, you know, think I'm, that they're I'm really worried. affecting? Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to to uh to tell from where i am up there in dana point and i haven't been paying attention much to it but but but, but you've experienced the same thing up in that region yeah yeah we did and it didn't help (laughs) and that and that where he's talking is some really good halibut grounds right and that's just chewing that stuff up. and even i mean steve let's let let's just say that it is the most pure of all sand that they're doing you're still pumping it up on the beach and covering things up and yeah. How do you how do you have the sand crabs in that ecosystem? The brittle stars survive when they have ten feet of sand put Over on top, top of them. them. Yeah, you know they, what, what are the grunion doing right now when they're looking? Exactly. They're, it's in my opinion, is just just my opinion in a, in a very short rant. They're screwing it up. Yeah. yeah. No, I yeah. hear you. It's yeah. not helping. It, it may no. be giving us. Uh, it's helping. It helping looks the pretty. It's, it's helping, helping the, beaches. the beaches. Yeah. But you know, where, did, where this is what a lot of people don't understand. Where did the sand naturally come from? People thought, well, the sand must have come from the ocean, and we must have done Todd, something. To the let ocean. me guess. We're stopping erosion. There you go. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're those, eliminating so, those. So it those came from watershed. Multi-million dollar houses don't fall down the cliffs. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. it came from watershed, and we've built a, you know, a, a, a cement barrier. A cement barrier. And so we, <laughs> the sand came from land and through watershed and proper, you know, yeah. uh, uh, tidal movement uh, redeposited Todd, under our beaches. We could do a whole two-hour yeah. show. Sure. <laughs> but I want to sneak in one more. I want to sneak in one more text here, and it's uh, from uh, Uncle Mike and from Huntington Beach, and he says, Good morning. Great show. Regardless of the weather today, Todd, being an old retired mechanic, how has the new diesel emission requirements for boating industry uh, uh, done to your boat services? Do you have to set up uh, uh, set up to tier four or better or better? Well, right now What's we're all story? tier three. Tier three. Well, yeah. yeah. So hopefully, I mean, tier four is that's way beyond. We yeah. We hope we don't. Uh, yeah. Know, because you know what that means. That's alternative energy. So, right. Um, we. You know, I mean, but boats like some of the boats that you manage. I mean, if they, if they have old power, you, like the so, one that you're doing right now, it's going to a tier three motor. Yeah, so the, we're repowering the Tai right now. It had uh, Detroit six uh, V six seventy uh, ones uh, and. 
uh, or pardon me, straight uh, 671s. I'm thinking of a boat with V690. That's like tier ones. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we're repowering to uh, QSCs, uh, Cummins. They're going to be a and, great And you upgrade. have the, the, the best guy in the world, Robert Sherrill. We Sherrill. have Robert Sherrill doing the yeah, repower. Yeah, and that's the, peop- that the grade of people that you work with yeah, is and, and so top-of-the-line guys. That absolutely, do that. yeah. So through Mansa Marine, um, we're repowering a boat right now that's over 40 years old. And the owner absolutely loves this boat. It's like taking a 57 Chevy that's been in the backyard yeah. forever and restoring it. However, this 57 Chevy had fresh paint. I mean, the exterior of the wow. tie is just absolutely phenomenal. The boat itself is a 10, and now we're going to make the engine room a 10. So, so um, cool. but yeah, and we, that's the kind of stuff you do. You you oversee projects like yeah. major projects or little projects. But the problem we're running into with old four-stroke or pardon me, old two-stroke motors is finding parts and finding mechanics. Mechanics. And we still have them. There's a reason why Detroit was around for as many years yeah. as it was, as it is. It's because it was a really well-built motor yeah. and stood up for years. Um, but it's tougher to find re- mechanics for them these days. And parts, probably. And parts. Um, yeah. And so, fortunately, you know, with uh, you know, with the newer motors, they're lighter, yeah, more powerful. Yeah, they're they're lighter, yeah. they're more powerful, uh, more fuel efficient. We can diagnose them with computers. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, it's so, a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah but it, you can you know the people to go to. Absolutely. All right. All right. Hey, we're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hookup. We're going to find out who's won this uh, four-pack of wind-on leaders from AFCO Psycho Pro Floor Carbon Leader stuff. So we're going to be right back on Let's Talk Hookup about the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. Hey, we're so lucky here in San Diego. We have fantastic weather and great fishing. We also have three great shops to take care of anglers. Hi, this is Ben, and you will see me at my dad's shop, Dana Landing in Mission Bay. We call it the one-stop shop for a great day on the water because it truly is. Food, bait, tackle, beverages, and more. Our tackle shop, headed by Johnny, is certainly one of the best. We have you covered from bay bass to big tuna. Plus, we have Doug, one of the finest reel repair guys around. For freshwater tackle, Nothing beats East County Bait and Tackle. Jeet and the guys have the best rod and reels, the hottest lures, and live bait. Our newest shop is Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle. Growing their stock of both fresh and saltwater tackle right in the heart of Lemon Grove. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Maple View and Lakeside. Lemon Grove Bait and Tackle, 94 to Broadway in Lemon Grove. And Dana Landing is next to the Dana Lawn Tramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. For your next fishing adventure, check Point Loma Sport Fishing. They offer half-day trips on the Daily Double and full-day trips on the Mission Bell every day. Perfect for novice or seasoned fishermen. Point Loma Sport Fishing also offers overnight to multi-day trips on the American Angler, Vagabond, Intrepid, Independence, New Loan, T-Bird, Game Changer, and more. Visit PointLomaSportFishing.com where you can purchase tickets online. Want to go fishing? Point Loma Sport Fishing has you covered. This is Captain Art Taylor from Searcher Sport Fishing. Your hook is one of the most important links to catching fish. And at Searcher Sport Fishing, we use and recommend Gamagatsu hooks. The Gamagatsu Nautilus hook is best for tuna. And now with a variety of sizes all the way down to size 4, Gamagatsu hooks are the ones to use. It's important to be prepared with the right tackle when you come aboard Searcher, so that should include Gamagatsu hooks. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state of the art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Cook Up. We're going to have Todd flip the coin. Figure All right, out who's go for it. These. You ready? See who wins, a caller or a texter. Here, here we go. Here goes. All right, winner of the four wine on leaders by AFCO Cycle Floor Carbon, texter. And the texter is Garrett. Garrett and Laguna Niguel. All right, congratulations, congratulations Garrett and Todd, Manser, Manser Marine. Uh, how do we get a hold of you? 
uh, if I don't answer, send me a text. Don't leave me a voicemail. I get too many. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to contact. email me, toddmanser at gmail.com. T-O-D-D-M-A-N-S-U-R. All right. A lot Todd, of knowledge. Thanks man. for uh, coming in and spending time with us here. And congratulations on your new company, yeah, Manson Marine. Thanks for having me. I know you're going to be successful because you always have been. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, and good luck on that roping. Absolutely. Keep getting those heads. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thanks to Corey. And thank you out there. Thanks to JP for manning the phones for us today and of course Adam for doing the Let's Talk Hookup app always on it there with that Let's Talk Hookup app and thanks to you out there for being listeners, callers, participants, texters all of that and tomorrow we have a great show for you 7 to 9 a.m. Captain Mike Klaus from the Pacific Dawn is going to be here and Carl Schmidt from Fisherman's Landing will be here so that's going to be a great show 7 to 9 a.m. tomorrow morning right here on Let's Talk Hookup on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio and the Let's Talk Hookup app